Hi, so today I'm going to be making Clemencia's capital uniform, which will be pretty much the same for any of the female capital uniforms. I've already made the pattern for it, which I kind of altered a pre-existing pattern, um, but I will link a tutorial below that is pretty similar to the one that I made. Um, and yeah, we're just going to see what happens. It should be good. I've, yeah, I just have to make the trousers, I guess. So here I'm marking out the pattern for the trousers. Um, the YouTube tutorial really didn't need very much alteration. It was pretty similar to the design in the film. One huge important tip that I've learned over the years is to write down everything on the pattern pieces. Because there was so many pieces in this design, it was just, it was crazy. So I'm so glad I did this. I ended up making um, a mock-up in calico and I realised that it was really too high for my waist so I ended up cutting off an inch from the top of the pattern but that was really the only thing I had to change in my final piece. Okay so the trousers themselves are pretty simple. These are the patterns. They have two darts, so one on the front and one on the back on each side, um, and yeah, they just, they sew up together and they'll have a fly down the front, actually that's the back, down the front. I ended up making most of this project from 100% cotton, and I got it from a fabric store called Fabricland, which was a wholesale place, uh, so it wasn't actually too expensive in the end, which was really good, because I'm on a student budget. Here I'm just marking around all of the pieces in a, a heat removable pen, which are amazing. And you just you can iron over the top and it'll disappear, or you can just leave them be and it won't sort of stain it or mark it. Um, so I went around the whole thing and then added a seam allowance around the outside. And then really the next task was just cutting everything out, following around those seam lines and making sure that everything turned out okay. Next I sewed together the outside leg and then the inside leg before sewing up the crotch. But I only could do that in the back because of the seam in the front, which was going to be a fly. It's also worth noting at this point that as much as I did intend when I started this project to film everything, I didn't really film everything in the end. I had so much coursework going on around university that I just completely forgot about it. So for instance when I'm putting in the fly I have pictures of it but I don't really have an in-depth tutorial around how I did it but there's plenty of other people on YouTube who do amazing tutorials. So I finished sewing up all of the side seams and the dots and next I've just got to sew up the middle so I'm going to sew the back to the back and then leave the front open so that I can put in the fly and then try it all on and I hope it fits but it should, I hope. I mean I think it will. These are the fly piece panels uh, which will iron together and then be used to hide the zip at the back. It 
it's moments like this when I think, oh, you know, that, that would have been way easier to sew had I not sewn up the back. Um, but we're going to do it this way now, and I, I think it'll be fine. The zipper's all in there. Um, it's blue because I'm using what materials I had pretty much. Um, but you can't see from the outside anyway, so. I will sew up the fly now. This is the bottom of the trousers which I hemmed and then top stitched. Right, here's the calculations for the apron. I'm not gonna lie, it's just a massive rectangle, or well, two massive rectangles that are all pleated. I did one and a half inch pleats, I think, and then with one inch in the middle, so they kind of overlapped slightly. But that was mainly just due to the length of fabric that I had, and it can be changed depending on your waist size and the width of the fabric. I ended up finding out that the best way to do this was by using a quilter's block or a quilter's square and then writing down all of the lines across the fabric in the, um, the heat pen and just pleating one by one and pinning them in place so that I could iron them later. This is what the lines look like. Here's a close-up of the pleating before I iron them in place. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with these. They all line up so they're all facing in the same direction, which is what happens in the film. And then they're all pretty much even as well, which is pretty cool. So next up was the lining. I made this pretty much exactly the same way that I made the outer layer and I made it out of like a, a silky shiny satin material before pinning it and turning it inside out so that you can't see the seams from the outside. And this is the bias binding which I used as the waistband. And then I just sewed all the pleats down one by one across the sewing machine and attach the bias binding. The final stage of this was putting the button holes on, so this would be how they'd attach the trousers. There was two buttons on either side and one in the middle for the back, and it all just attached on like that so it could be easily taken off. These are the final two front and back images for the apron. Yeah, I'd like to apologise for this section because I didn't film very much at all or take many pictures. It was a blouse. I used a simplicity pattern, um, which I found in a charity shop, doesn't really exist anymore. 
and I just made the blouse. These are, this is me cutting out the blouse fabric. I used a lightweight cotton. But otherwise, I just followed the pattern instructions and there's plenty of blouse patterns online. So I've marked everything out um, where it should be and pinned it all in place and then added the seam allowances to all of the pieces. I've also added a little bit extra down the front piece which is before the, you know, like the weird um, sort of centre fabric so that I can fold this over. Um, I mean you'll see when it's done but because it has a little foldy bit down the front so that extra fabric will allow me to do that and next I'm just going to cut them all out so these are the lining pieces uh, which I've pinned on and I've drawn around with my heat pan so that it'll just iron off later um, and then I'm pretty much just going to cut these out and sew them all together, is the, uh, the simple explanation. In the name of sustainability and cost, I ended up using these tie pieces for the front of the jacket panels, which I presume may have been custom fabric for the film, but it was really difficult to find anyway. <laughs> and that's it, this is my final Clemencia Dovecoat cosplay. I really hope you enjoyed this making of video, I know it was a little bit rough around the edges but I'm really happy I ended up completing it. <laughs>